COVID-19 might be becoming endemic in most parts of the world, but could melting permafrost unleash the next pandemic? And what effect could it have on climate change and on infrastructure? These are questions that are important to all of us uh, today and particularly to us in the insurance industry. So I'm very pleased on the occasion of the launch of our Sonar 2022 report to be talking to Dr. Holger Fry, the, uh, an expert on glaciology and geomorphodynamics at the University of Zurich. Dr. Fry, welcome. Thank you very much. And my first question, how would you best define permafrost and the different types of it that exist? Well, permafrost is basically the abbreviation for permanent frost. By definition, it means any subsurface material that remains frozen below zero degrees for more than two consecutive years. And we found such, such conditions at any place where we have cold air temperatures. This is mainly at high elevations in the mountains and at high latitudes in the Arctic. Good. And how important is it for maintaining an intact ecosystem and uh, preserving biodiversity? In mountains, this depends a lot on how much ice is actually stored in this permafrost. Steep rock faces basically have very little to zero ice, but in less extreme topography, there can be a significant amount of water be stored in these uh, permafrost bodies. And this can have a significant contribution to melt, to runoff in the dry seasons. But this depends very locally on other environmental conditions. But in the Arctic, permafrost is a fundamental element of the landscape and of the ecosystems. And there the ecosystem is anyway currently under big stress because the Arctic region experiences a three to four times higher warming than the global average. And this means these ecosystems, they are already under heavy stress. And if now these permafrost conditions continue to further change, there is the question to which extent this ecosystem can further adapt and also how quickly they can respond to such changes. Right, okay. And then and how significant and what are the changes that we're seeing at the moment, both in the Arctic region, but also in the high altitude permafrost? What we see already now in boreholes across the European mountains is that the warming that we observe at the surface since the beginning of the 21st century has already propagated down into a greater depth, currently uh, more than 40 to 50 meters. This does not mean that the permafrost is completely thawing away in these parts, but it means that the permafrost body is actually warming, and this has negative effects on slope stability. And we already now observe more frequent rockfalls, landslides across the mountain ranges in the world, and this has, of course, negative impacts on human lives, on infrastructure, because especially if in connection with water, this can be the beginning, the first elements of long chains of processes that have far reaches up to several hundred of kilometers. Okay. A second effect is that we have an increase in sediment flux. And this is, of course, a big challenge mainly for infrastructure of the hydropower sector. This sector is anyway stressed by glacier retreat, changing water patterns, less water availability during the dry season. And if now the sediment flux is on top of that challenging this, this means increased maintenance costs, and this can actually reduce the rentability of hydropower production in mountains. Okay, and the effect of permafrost on human and animal life is often referred to as a major unknown. How would you assess the risks to human and animal life? This is definitely a big unknown. We know that permafrost in the Arctic holds huge amounts of microorganisms, of bacteria, of viruses, of um, anthropogenic, nuclear, chemical waste, heavy metals, etc. And these are components that are stored locked in within the ice. And now the thawing happens in a top-down direction. So that means we continued warming. First, we have recently deposited components being released. And the f as the warming continues, the thawing continues, the increasingly older components become released and re-enter environmental fluxes into systems. We know that such microorganisms have extremely, are extremely adapted to uh, extreme conditions. They have vi viabilities of more than a million of years. We know that bacteria in uh, permafrost have antibiotic resistance. And we also found viruses in permafrost in the Arctic region that can affect human health, like pox, like anthrax, like different influenza viruses. Now, of course, if they're being released, they will not be directly infectious, but very little is known about mutations, about how they will interact with uh, current viruses, etc. So science has not very clear answers, but this is uh, a topic of concern. Okay, and so in our 2022 sonar report, obviously we're interested in uh, thawing permafrost for these reasons, both on the property and the casualty side of the insurance business and on the life and health 
side. Um, can you just tell us just a little bit more about the sort of the impacts we might see both on the property casualty side and perhaps what risks uh, and, and the life and health side and what, what risks insurers might, uh, you know, um, mm -hmm. sort of face from that? Yeah, on the property and uh, life insurance side, it's definitely the problem of mass movements of increased slope instabilities in the Alps. Then the second component in the mountains is increased sediment fluxes that might affect in, um, infrastructure, but also mainly the hydropower sector. In the Arctic region, mainly this is also affecting infrastructure. There are current studies that say by the middle of the century, about 70% of current Arctic infrastructure will be exposed to further thawing to infrastructure damages. And also more than half of the hydrocarbon extraction sites and extraction fields, they will be most likely exposed to thaw-related uh, ground instabilities. And then of course on the health and uh, ecosystem side of things, the main concern is also about the release of um, chemical contamination of uh, chemical waste and nuclear waste that is deposited and currently still locked away. This includes also heavy metal from mining that is widespread in the Arctic. And this can be a major challenge and has very, have very negative uh, impacts on human health and on ecosystems. Okay, and then finally, so what impact do you think this will also have on climate change? Well, it's important to know that soils in the Arctic permafrost actually store twice as much carbon as the atmosphere does. And of course, if these um, storages are being mobilized by thawing and being released to the atmosphere, this means an increase in greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. Now, there was a lot of concern that this could be actually a tipping point in, in the global climate. The latest statement of the IPCC in their sixth assessment report now says that this effect of carbon being released from thawing permafrost is enough to be important, but not enough to have a runaway warming effect. So not enough to have a self-reinforcing acceleration of global climate. But it has, of course, a major impact and can ex exacerbate the global climate change. Okay. Well, ending there on a minor note of uh, optimism, at least, at, at least. least a little bit of good. At least. Dr. Holger Frey, uh, expert on glaciology and uh, geomorphodynamics at the University of Zurich. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much.